What is going on Gulf Coast Nation guys? Welcome back to another episode. As you can see, we are on the boat with some fun passengers. You guys remember Chris and Zach from some other videos and you also might notice that we are missing somebody. Adam is not here. Again today, he got in a fight with a board. He, he got a black eye. We were trying to gig some stingrays for shark bait and uh, there was a loose board anyways, caught him in the eye. Big old black eye. Comment below some good prayers for Adam to get better. And uh, he's, he's on some antibiotics right now, so he cannot go in the sunshine. And obviously, it's gonna be a little sunshiny today. So anyways, our plan right now, as usual, jump right out the pass, get some bait. And today, we got a little surprise for you guys. Come on, let's go. That's what we're after right there. The grass. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got something. Hit it on the fall. Fish number one, fish number one, get in the boat. Oh gosh. <laughs> Come in first fish here. They have some crazy cool colors on them. I check out how neon that is. Got some really cool colors to him, but not of much use right now. So we're gonna let him go. It's a super, super long run here because it's getting so rough, but we're going to give it a good troll here. This is something we've been wanting to do for a while. We went ahead and made the investment, picked up the Nomad trolling lures, and uh, we're just letting it run now. Letting it run for a little bit. This is our first attempt at Wahoo trolling, and uh, it's definitely not a great day to, to start, but... Gotta try, gotta let it go. Learn new things, go outside your comfort zone. So as you guys saw, the uh, 30 mile offshore Wahoo trolling game was not the day for it today. So 
We ran back in. We're about 10, 12 miles offshore right now. Getting rougher as the day goes on, but you know, we're gonna salvage the day, do some jigging and some live baiting, hopefully leave with some snapper, maybe hook it up with some amberjack, who knows, but we're gonna get some lines in the water because that's that was our purpose, so let's do it. Gaff shot, man. He's smoking that thing right next to the boat. Woo! First fish on the brand new rod there. Beautiful Bonita going in the box. So what I'm doing here, taking some old ballyhoo, cutting them up, chunking them in. That's a technique that Adam likes to do a lot. And uh, he's gonna chunk some baits out, get about five chunks up, five whole fish chunked up, out. And then uh, I put my free line hook in there. Yeah, that was in two tanks that we was on. Oh, yeah. Still got a little mangrove spot, huh? So when you're doing this, you don't want a big pile of line in the water, but you also don't want any pressure on your bait. So I'm keeping a real close eye on that slack. Letting that, see that slack, right? yep, yep. So just watching that, watching that slack, because I want that bait to fall naturally, like the whole way down. So I'm just keeping like a little piece in my hands, and I'll grab three foot or so, and then let it go. But you don't want to pile up too much, yeah. Oh, yep. Oh, oh, dude, that's a big fish. Holy crap! Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh my gosh. Ah! Oh, Woo! Oh. Holy smokes. What'd you catch him on? Little, just a little piece of bait does like free lining down there. Holy smokes, y'all. That's right, they're gonna be next to the boat here in a second. I'm gonna pull them up. I'm gonna pull these guys up. Just keeping that slack on the water there. Not too much, not too little. Letting that bait fall. Oh, oh, oh. Still got it. There we go. Just a nice little snapper there, right at legal size. Looking good. There we go. There we go. 
That's an AJ breaking in. <laughs> Woo! Finally breaking in the new one. Ooh! Come here, you big nasty. Oh my gosh, that's a snapper. A snapper. <laughs> Holy cow. Screw it, coming in the boat. Boat hey, flip. That's a hawk. <laughs> yes, yeah. sir. Holy smokes. I do. <laughs> Earned that one for sure, but snapper on a knife jig. Beautiful looking stuff. Oh, I wasn't recording. <laughs> Boom, guys. Big old amberjack right there. First one on a new ride there. You ready? Yep. You can go and give her a plunge, man. <laughs> Big kickoff. Big kickoff. Yeah. They'll swim down. Did you get? Whoa, 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 whoa! There you go. Hey. What is this? <laughs> Dang, man. And he bit y'all, didn't he? That's right. All right, y'all. It's been a long day. Just finished up. It's about 4.30. We uh, met up at the gas station this morning at 5.15, so it's a little over 10 hours of, uh, of going nonstop. This morning was rough, but we stuck to our guns. We prevailed in the end, and uh, although no big victories, we got five keeper snapper and uh, got some AJ, had some good time, saw some cool stuff, and definitely put up with some rough waves. We're heading in right now, let's go. What's going on guys, back at the house now, got cleaned up, got a little bit of rest, and uh, you know, I wanted to explain a technique I was using in that video, the free lining, the chunks of bait. Um, we ended up catching quite a few snapper that way that day. And um, it's a technique that's very effective, but has very specific times that it can be used on that particular day. The, uh, the current was not bad, although the waves were really bad, the current was not bad. So we could get a bait to float down, not straight down, you know, but back and down. Um, some days the current, when you put a free line bait out, that thing is gonna be all the way back on the surface, not sinking very much at all. Um, but basically, I like to use a lighter setup. Um, we were using that forged eight on the Goofish heavy rod um, with 30 pound braid. I like using light because one, it's less for the fish to see, but it also lets your bait sink down faster. Obviously heavier braid, heavier mono, thicker line is not gonna sink quite as fast. It's gonna be a bigger presence in the water, um, deterring more fish, et cetera, et cetera. So we're using a sandbar tackle hook on a little bit of 40 pound mono there. And then we use the uni uni tonight right to our braid and um, you know basically like you saw i'm just keeping it in the water and i'm keeping enough slack on it to where my bait is falling naturally i'm never coming tight on that bait because if you know if you throw in what i was doing was i was throwing a handful of chunk baits in with my bait just like you would tuna chunking and um, you know there's six or seven baits falling naturally and your bait has a hook in it and I like to, you know, sink that whole circle hook in that little piece of squid or something. Try to leave it as hidden as possible. And it's sinking with all those baits. If you come tight on your bait and pull it out of that range, it looks unnatural. Most of the time, they're just going to skip right on past it and uh, not, you know, not touch your bait at all. So make sure you're keeping that line slack, but you also don't want so much slack in the water that you can't see those little bitty ticks and those little bitty movements in the line when they pick up the bait. Once you feel them pick up the bait, most of the time they'll pull that line out of your hands. Go ahead and gauge your reel real tight. Don't set that circle hook and enjoy the fight. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment below, especially there for Mr. Adam because we're ready to see him out on the water, out in the sunshine very soon once his eye heals up. And as always, we'll catch you guys next week. Yoo! Boom!